Hello and welcome to this next topic of OCR A-level chemistry. This is topic 30, which is carbonyl compounds. Now a carbonyl compound is any organic compound which contains a carbon-oxygen double bond. Now there's loads of different chemicals which do that, so I'm going to draw a few different functional groups which contain a carbon-oxygen double bond. And here are some of those carbonyl compounds. So aldehydes, which we've seen before, and ketones, and carboxylic acids, we've seen one of those before. You may also have come across esters, which is this one, or amides, or acyl chlorides, I spoke about those briefly last time, and acid anhydrides. Now that's not all the carbonyl compounds, there are more, but we're going to talk about these all at some point during the next few videos. So today I'm just going to deal with these three on the left, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. And I'm going to kind of talk about carboxylic acids not in a lot of detail, just in passing with the other two. So an aldehyde, as we know, can be oxidised into a carboxylic acid. And so you can tell the difference between aldehydes and ketones if you've got one, but you don't know which it is. You can work out if you've got an aldehyde or a ketone by oxidising it. And if it oxidises, then it's an aldehyde, because ketones can't be oxidised. So if you knew you had an aldehyde or a ketone, you reacted it with acidified potassium dichromate and refluxed it, then an aldehyde, would turn into a carboxylic acid, and the dichromate would be reduced to chromium 3 plus, which is green. The ketone would stay orange. And so that's one way of telling the difference between aldehydes and ketones. And the other way, the main way that you'd distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, instead of using potassium dichromate, which would also oxidise alcohols, you use ammoniacal silver nitrate, which is silver nitrate dissolved into ammonia solution. And if you mix that with aldehydes and ketones, then only one of those reacts with it. And they react with the silver 1 plus ion. Now, aldehydes can be oxidised, and the silver 1 plus ions can be reduced to silver. And so aldehydes react with silver 1 plus ions to make carboxylic acids and silver metal. And that silver metal will coat the outside of any beaker that it's in and leave what's called a silver mirror on the outside of that beaker. Now to do that, you add what's called Tollens reagent, which is silver nitrate dissolved into ammonia, and then you warm them to aldehydes, they'll make a silver mirror, since they reduce the silver 1 plus ions in solution to silver metal, leaving the silver mirror on the beaker, and ketones won't produce a silver mirror. And that about concludes everything we're going to talk about with carboxylic acids. I mean, we're just talking really there about how to differentiate between aldehydes and ketones, but it does include carboxylic acids, so that's why I left it on there. In the rest of the topic, there'll also be some other ways to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, or to determine you've got an aldehyde or a ketone. So I'm just going to get rid of carboxylic acids and talk about those. The second test we need to know about, this being the first one, is use of 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, or 2,4-DNPH. It starts off as a kind of ready-orange solution, and it reacts with aldehydes and ketones to make a yellow-orange precipitate. Now that precipitate, if you filter it off, purify it, then you can find the melting point of that precipitate. And if you find the melting point of that, and look at a table of data which tells you all the different melting points of the 2,4-DNPH derivatives, the one that it matches with is probably the aldehyde or ketone which you originally had. So it can be used to determine not just that you've got an aldehyde or ketone, but which aldehyde or ketone it is. And so these are the two chemical tests you need to know for aldehydes and ketones. If you want to know if you've got an aldehyde or a ketone, then you react with 2,4-DNPH. 2,4-DNPH will react with both, producing a yellow precipitate or an orange yellow precipitate, which if you find the melting point of, will tell you or give you an indication as to which aldehyde or ketone you had to begin with. Now there's a lot of different aldehydes and ketones that you can have to begin with, so you have to be very precise with your melting point determination. And also, it helps to have some kind of idea of what you've got to begin with. But that being said, the questions never normally go into that much detail. Just knowing that the melting point is indicative of which aldehyde and ketone you have is pretty much all you need to know. The second test is if you know you've got an aldehyde or a ketone, but you don't know which, you can use Tollens reagent. And Tollens reagent will react with aldehydes only to produce a silver mirror. And the way it does that is by reducing Ag plus to Ag, makes the silver, and the only one that does that is the aldehydes, because only aldehydes can be oxidised. Now the rest of this topic is about nucleophilic addition to these two compounds. I mean, 
need to talk about that in two different ways. One is with sodium borohydride, and the second one is with cyanide ions in the presence of an acid. They both follow the same mechanism for aldehydes and ketones reacting with NADH4 or hydrogen cyanide. And so I'm just going to draw out the mechanism once for all of the four different reactions I'll show you as well. Okay, firstly I'll do the reactions between the aldehydes and ketones with NADH4. NADH4 is a reducing agent. I remember it's a reducing agent because of how many hydrogens it's got in it. So adding hydrogen is reducing, and so it's got four hydrogens and only two other atoms. So a high proportion of hydrogen in that compound. And you can reduce these, and it's exactly the opposite of oxidation. So aldehydes you produce by oxidizing primary alcohol, and ketones you produce by oxidizing secondary alcohol. And so when you reduce them, the aldehydes become primary alcohols and the ketones become secondary alcohols. Now I'll go into a bit more detail about these reactions when I do the mechanism, but essentially you just get aldehydes becoming primary alcohols and ketones becoming secondary alcohols. It's actually quite a complex mechanism and a complex system of things that are happening. You need a stoichiometric amount of the sodium borohydride because it's the reducing agent, so it gets oxidised itself. The same way as you do when you add acidified potassium dichromate in an oxidation reaction. But most of the time, all you're really asked for is the reactant, and that is sodium borohydride. And we do the mechanism for that now. And I'll do it for the aldehyde. It's exactly the same as you do for the ketone, just follow the same steps. Now, instead of using sodium, what's it called? Sodium tetrahydroborate, instead of using that, you just write H minus as your nuclear bond. So instead of going into the details of how this reacts, we just assume use H- as the nuclear bond because it just makes the mechanism a little bit easier to write down. If you look at where that comes from, you could just write NaBH4 makes H- and NaBH3+, but I'm just going to use H- as my nuclear bond. And nuclear bond is attracted to positive centres, as we know, and the positive centre in this chemical is the carbon of the carbonyl. It shouldn't be surprising that it's the carbonyl that gets involved, and oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, the carbon is slightly positive. So that is where the H minus or the nuclear bond will attack. So I remember that curly arrow to start a pair of electrons and go to an atom. And carbon can only make four bonds, and so when it makes another bond with hydrogen, it breaks one of the bonds in the carbonyl group. And make sure you include this dipole because it explains why the reaction happens in the first place. The way you'd finish off this reaction to get from this anion to the product is just to heat it with water and the minus will take a H plus from water. So that will be a lone pair on the oxygen minus, making a bond with this hydrogen, and then the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen breaks, leaving OH minus as well. So if we're going to be completely correct, we still have OH minus over here, and NaBH3 plus, so maybe that's a salt, but we don't have to go into that much detail. As I said, reacts very similar if it is a ketone. And it also reacts very similar if instead of a H minus, you have CN minus. It's exactly the same mechanism as nuclear phenic addition, but I'll draw it for you so you can see it. So I'm just going to use hydrogen cyanide, so H plus ion and CN minus. And the minus ion, if you draw out the structure, is actually on the carbon atom. So the carbon atom is the one that needs an extra electron, that's where the minus goes. And so it's the carbon atom that's got the lone pair on it. And that lone pair, same as it did before, attacks the positive carbon in the carbon ion. And then again, exactly the same as before, the carbon-oxygen double bond breaks, going onto the oxygen, leaving an O minus ion. And actually, you've made another carbon-carbon single bond here, which is fantastically useful. Okay, so H plus, that's the H plus that came from the hydrogen cyanide. This oxygen minus, with its lone pair, is going to make a bond with that H, leaving an alcohol next to this nitrile group. And this product, because it's got a OH, which is now called a hydroxy, and CN is a hydroxy nitrile. Now I mentioned it in passing earlier, and I said in the last lesson that making carbon-carbon single bonds in organic synthesis is kind of rare and actually very useful. So if this started off being two carbons long, then it ends being three carbons long. And that almost never happens in organic synthesis reactions. This CN can undergo a bunch of different things. You can change it into loads of different things like carboxylic acids and amines, but we don't need to know them, they're not in the specification. So this is as far as we'll go. And that actually concludes this topic of carbonyl compounds. There's not much to it, it's just basically that nucleophilic addition reaction. 
and the two different tests for aldehyde and ketones. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you can join me for the next one. Goodbye.